we welcome you all to our uh, evening meeting. And that, as Jamila said, uh, today's topic is uh, cure from backsliding. And God says to his people, uh, when Jeremiah is prophesying through Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 22, return faithless people, I will cure you of backsliding. Curing means healing. When people backslide, they need uh, healing. And God says here, return faithless people, I will cure you of backsliding. When I announced this topic to people in the Zoom, in the, in the broadcast list, some, some might have thought, I'm not backslidden, uh, so I don't need this message because I'm fine with God. But this message is not just for people who are backslidden. It's for people who are secure in the Lord, who have people around them who are backslidden, how to help them come out of it. We must be selfless in our ministry. Not only when we backslide, we should come back to God and He will heal us. But around there are always people who have gone away from God after tasting God. So today's message is, both, is for both. Those who happen to have backslidden and how the Lord can bring us back to Him. And those who are fine in the Lord, right with God, walking with God, and find people around them in the church who are backslidden. How we can be instruments in them coming back to God. So it's a message for all people. And all of us have people around us who have gone away from God temporarily. God will bring them back. But there are times when you go close to God, sometimes not so close to God. So today's message is for both, both groups of people. Those who are backslidden and those who are not backslidden. But God calls us to be people to help others who are backslidden. The word backsliding in the Hebrew language, the word used there, actually means turning back. Or rather, faithlessness. Turning back or faithlessness. Obeying God is by faith. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, it says, The righteous shall live by faith. Thus shall live by faith. Same thing is quoted by the Apostle Paul in the Romans. Romans 1.17 Righteous shall live by faith. Today, as Christians, we are made righteous by the blood of Jesus. He is our righteousness. And all of us are made righteous. And therefore, we live as Christians by faith. So backsliding happens when our faith gets affected. Obeying God is by faith. Romans chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible talks about how obedience comes from faith. When obedience comes from faith, it's a joyful obedience, not a burden at all. Christian life is not a burden when you live by faith. When you live by your own strength, it's a burden. So in 1 John chapter 5, 3, 4, and 5, we read, John writes, This is love for God, to obey His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Who is the one who comes to the world? You believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You overcome the world by faith. So when you live by faith, we are overcomers. But sometimes this faith gets affected for various reasons, because of various reasons. And in the case of the people living at that time, God says to his people, return to me, faithless people. If you are having faith in me, you will be walking in my ways. You won't backslide. I will cure your backsliding. So the very important thing to understand is when we backslide, we depend upon God to bring us back, not our own strength. At the same time, when you find people around you are backslidden, who are turned back from God, it's because of lack of faith at that point of time. And don't expect them to come back on their own. They will have a desire to come back, but they can't turn from sin unless God helps them. He loves to help his people. He says, I will cure you. People can't heal themselves. Only God can heal. So don't look, condemn people who are backslidden. Please remember God says, I will cure you of backsliding. What does God expect them to do? The same chapter, third chapter of uh, Jeremiah, verse 13, the Lord says, only acknowledge your guilt. I will cure you of backsliding. Only accept the fact you are backslidden. Accept the fact you have gone away. Acknowledge. Confess. And then God says that to his people, verse 14 and 15, the same uh, chapter, 14 and 15. 
Return to me, for I am your husband, I am your uh, lord, I am your master. I will choose you one from a town, two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. I will give shepherds after my own heart, who will guide you knowledge and understanding. When you say, I have sinned against you, Lord, I have backslidden, then acknowledge your guilt, I will cure you. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. So if you are right with God, you and me are right with God, and you find people around you who are not right with God, who are backslidden, God wants us to be shepherds after God's own heart. Now, we may not be pastors, but we can be functionally playing the role of a pastor. What is a pastor? The word for pastor in Greek is a word called poimen, P-O-I-M-E-N. Poimen means shepherd, shepherd. Shepherd is one who keeps the sheep together. The chief shepherd is Jesus, but we are his uh, servants. We are his slaves, actually. We are co-workers with God. When you find someone backslidden and turning back from the faith, God wants us to be functionally acting like a shepherd to bring the sheep under the chief shepherd who is Jesus. So every one of us can play the role of a shepherd Shepherding the sheep to be in the flock and not wander away from the flock. So sometimes you can be sheep wandering away. Sometimes you can be shepherd bringing back the sheep. But we may be people after God's own heart. Now, Jeremiah is prophesying up to 589 BC when they were overrun by the Babylonians. 40 years he was ministering. Now, when people don't have faith in God's word in those Old Testament times, they went away. When they obeyed God, they were blessed. In the Old Testament time, the norm was blessings for obedience, curses for disobedience. Blessings for obedience, curses for disobedience. Because of the time of the law, not grace, as we have today. So when they obeyed God, they were blessed. When they were blessed, and prosperous, they became complacent. The Lord spoke through Hosea to his people in Hosea 13.6. Please remember, around 720 BC, Hosea was prophesying in northern kingdom of Israel, along with Amos. In Jerusalem, there was Isaiah and there was Micah. Four prophets at the same time ministering, 720 BC, and they, they were ministering at that time. Hosea told his people, God's people in Israel, Northern Kingdom, Samaria as the capital. God says through Hosea to them about God's people. When I fed them, they were satisfied. When they're satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. When I fed them and I blessed them, they were satisfied. They became proud. Then they forgot me. And in the same time, Amos is prophesying in northern Kingdom of Israel. And God speaks through Amos to the same people. Amos chapter 6, verse 1. What those who are complacent, who feel secure in Mount Samaria. Security, complacency happens when you are blessed in many ways. And then you become, you know, taking God for granted. And after some time, you tend to go away from God because you are very happy about the circumstances. That happens when you're complacent, satisfied, and not having a close relationship with God. Of course, later on, we find when the people in Jerusalem listen to what Isaiah and Micah are prophesying, they're protected from the Assyrians. Assyrians. 720 BC, Assyrians attacked Israel. And although Amos and Hosea prophesied, they didn't listen to them. They were overrun. Jerusalem was kept intact because there was a king called Hezekiah who repented at the, at the preaching of Micah and Isaiah and God preserved them. Whenever they obeyed God, they were blessed. They became complacent. They had problems. They cried out to God. God sent the prophets. So backsliding was a pattern those days. One moment close to God, next moment away from God. Again, close to God, again backsliding. And many years later, more than 120 years later, when Jeremiah is prophesying in Jerusalem, they're again backslidden. 
because of lack of faith. They didn't take God's word very seriously. Backsliding happens when you're complacent about your circumstances and you take God's word very lightly. Very lightly. Don't take it seriously. And God lamented over his people. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10, he says, To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed, they will not hear. The word of God is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. God is lamenting over his people. To whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed, they will not listen. When you backstride, there are two stages. First stage is you don't find God's word nice to the ear. You don't find it pleasant at all. They will not hear. The people will not listen to God. The word of God became offensive to them. They found no pleasure in it. The first stage of black setting is you find no pleasure in God's word. Oh, I know everything. I heard it before. It's there, the Bible. I know these verses. But nothing exciting you in the heart. First stage is that. No pleasure. Second stage, of, uh, second stage of backsliding is when you find the same word of God which you once enjoyed so much, you find no pleasure in it and now it becomes offensive. Don't want to hear God's word. Not the pure word of God. Jokes, stories, anecdotes, all that is fine. Pure word of God, the divine soul and spirit that pierces the heart to convict us, to make us come close to God. People don't want to listen. And that's when they will say no to God and they backslide. It's, it's a gradual process of drifting. But praise God, God will never let us go away if your heart is right before God. Backsliding happens because of faithlessness. Obedience comes from faith. Both Old Testament and New Testament. So when they backslid, God told them, return faithless people. I will cure you of backsliding. I'll give shepherds after my own heart who will guide you. Only accept the fact you have sinned and you are backslidden. I will cure you. What a wonderful God we've got. He's a healer, a redeemer, a restorer. Always he's the same. He never changes. Malachi 3.6 I the Lord do not change. So when the people went away, God sent the prophets. Listen to the prophets. They were blessed. When they're blessed, they became complacent. They forgot God. Went away, again got problems, again came back. It's a cycle happening all the time. And the Old Testament time, whenever the priests, the prophets and the kings were close to God, people are close to God. When the kings were close to God, people are close to God. When the kings are far away from God, leadership went away from God, people went away from God. I mean, the priesthood was terrible those days, during Micah's time. They're all following the world. So there's excuse to say, priests have gone away, so people went away from God. Today they've got a perfect high priest, Jesus. Nobody can say we don't have a perfect priest. Perfect priest we've got. So no reason for us to drift away from God. I come back to New Testament time, why we drift away from God? Why we backslide? Same lack of faith. Faith has many opposites. One of them is sight. Sight is the opposite of faith. You look at a situation and you get absorbed by the situation, faith gets affected. That's why Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 7. We live by faith, not by sight. We live by faith, not by sight. We look at a particular situation, be it problems or people or circumstances, we we'll lose a connect from God. Arise on earthly things. We are called to have our eyes fixed on Jesus, the perfect high priest. Hebrews 12, 2. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. And how wonderful to know, even though we are faithless sometimes and therefore backslide, we are faithless, he remains faithful. 2 Timothy 2, 13. He's the same God, Old Testament time, New Testament time. Because of faithlessness, People drift away from God. But what does God say? Even though you are faithless, he remains faithful. For he cannot disown himself. If God were to disown us, it's like God saying, I'm not God. He's disowning himself. 
even though we are faithful, he remains faithful. And because he's always faithful to us, why can't we choose to be always faithful to him? And if you feel you're not having enough faith, ask him for faith. He will give you faith. Ask him to increase your faith. As the apostles told Jesus in Luke 17, 5. And he told them to forgive people seven times a day. He said, increase our faith. Even the Old Testament time, at a time of law, when they drifted away, God said, I will cure you. You come back to me. Only acknowledge your guilt. Same principles that even today. When we give, go away from God, we say, Lord, I come back to you, Lord. He's just one prayer away. Lord, I have gone away. I'm not having the same love for you as before. The other day I spoke to you about, the previous session I spoke to you about uh, forsaking the first love. When the Lord told the church in Ephesus, Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, you're forsaking your first love. When you initially come to Christ, you're full of zeal and loving God is to obey him, number one. Number two, serve him, serve his people. When you just come to Christ, we have so much of zeal to obey him and to serve him and serve his people. But sometimes over a period of time, that zeal might reduce when you don't look at the Lord, but look at circumstances. And we forsake that first love. If not, you don't forsake, at least we, that first love gets reduced. And therefore, it leads to backsliding. So obeying God is expression of love for God. And we obey God simply by faith. And what affects our faith, one of them is circumstances. We live by sight, not by faith. Even though you look at circumstances, you get drifted away. God will never let us go away permanently. He will draw us back. You learn a lesson, he'll draw us back. One more thing is when we don't take God's word seriously, we will drift away. You'll find in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 1, it's written. We must pay careful attention to what we heard that we will not drift away. We must pay careful attention to what we have heard that we will not drift away. Drifting is actually backsliding. Now, falling from grace can happen suddenly. Suddenly do something wrong, you completely cut off from God, you feel you cut off from God. God won't cut us off, but we cut us off from God. Backsliding happens when you slowly drift away. Drifting is like an iceberg in the Arctic or Antarctica. Every iceberg seems to be stationary. When you fly to uh, America from India, when you fly over the Europe and then uh, uh, across the Atlantic Ocean, somewhere near the Greenland or Iceland, from the 35,000 feet, look down. In summer, especially when the ice is melting, the ice bars are melting, it finds white specks, white specks from 35,000 feet. They're all icebergs. They appear to be stationary. They're never stationary, they're always moving. Icebergs always move, they drift. They don't uh, go fast, very, drift, uh, very slowly they drift. So, like, Backsliding is like that. We drift. We don't even know we are drifting. How do you know we are drifting? When you don't find God's word any more pleasurable, number one. Second stage is we find offensive. Offensive. Whenever you find that you don't enjoy God speaking to you, you want to hear his voice. Oh, if I hear his voice, I'm, I, I can't, I, I won't be able to bear it. God always speaks to us for our good. When the Israelites came to the Mount of Sinai and God was about to give more Ten Commandments, God came up on the mountain in fire. They saw fire on the Mount of Sinai. Exodus 19, 18. Fire on the mountain. The thunder, lightning, trumpet blast. It was a spectacular display of God's presence on that mountain. The Israelites tell Moses, Exodus 20th chapter, verse 19. Moses you speak to us, we will listen. Don't have God speak to us. If God speaks to us, we will die. They didn't want to come near God. They didn't want to hear God. They're scared of God. Today we don't have an unhealthy fear of God. We have a reverent fear of God. A reverent fear makes us obey Him joyfully. So God is a healer of from backsliding. Only have to say, Lord, I've gone away from you. I'm drifting, Lord. I want to come back, Lord. And you can be sure God will take us back. The New Testament also, there are examples of people who have drifted away. 
backstood it. Take, for example, a classic example of Peter. We all know that Peter, uh, the Lord told him, before the rooster crows, uh, uh, crows you, you deny me three times. He denied him three times, he denied him. And we all know how God restored him. 21st chapter of uh, John, 15 to 17, Lord made him reaffirm three times, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord. But even before that, you find how beautifully, even before he denied him three times, the Lord spoke to Peter about not only his coming back to the Lord, also serving God. He told him, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows in the morning. And then the Lord tells him, Luke 22nd chapter, 31-32. Simon, Simon, Satan has to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you, your faith will not fail. I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you return back, strengthen your brothers. In other words, God spoke to Peter about him coming back from backsliding. Even before he denied him three times, he already spoke to him. Satan has sipped you like wheat. But I prayed for you, your faith will not fail. Temporarily it failed, but God says, not permanently. And when you return back, strengthen your brothers. How wonderful our God is. Even before Peter did them three times, the Lord spoke about coming back. You'll come back. Not only you'll come back, you'll strengthen your brothers. Now, Peter must give him all credit for that. You know, although he did deny them three times, after Christ rose from the dead, when Mary Magdalene and the other ladies, Mary, the mother of James and Joanna, went to that tomb, empty tomb, they go back and tell the disciples, oh, he's risen, he's not there. 24th chapter of Luke, verse 11 and 12. When the ladies go and tell the disciples, they're all gathered in one particular place, they didn't believe them. They didn't believe what the lady said. They thought this is nonsense they're talking. It was nonsense as used in my Bible, in NIV Bible. Check it out later on, 24th chapter of Luke, verse 11. How can it be true? It must be nonsense what they're talking. But then 12th verse says, Peter, on the other hand, however Peter, it says, however Peter ran to the tomb. He believed. What is happening here? Beautiful, isn't it? Much later, Lord appeared to the Peter in the, by the Sea of Tiberias, made him deny, made him uh, reaffirm three times, I love you, I love you, I love you, and came back to serving God. But then before that, without the Lord meeting Peter after resurrection, he heard from Mary and others that he's risen in the empty tomb it is. Others didn't believe what the lady said. They thought it's nonsense what they're talking. How can it be true? But Peter, however, ran to the tomb so give him all the credit for that. Although he denied him three times, before seeing Jesus resurrected, ran to the tomb. And that same evening, Lord appeared to them. And later on, you find, in one of the 40 days when he appeared to people, he appeared to them by the Sea of, of Tiberias. That's when the Lord restores Peter to uh, wanting to, uh, to confirm he loves Jesus. And then Lord says, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, take care of my sheep. Look how the Lord restored him. Before he him three times, he will come back. Not only he will come back, he will strengthen the brothers. Prophecy God the Lord Jesus gave to Peter. It was fulfilled much later when he came back. And then what happens is the same Peter who only denied him three times because of the people around uh, 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 who were arresting Jesus and there was a servant girl who identified him Three, three times he's identified. Every time he says, I don't know that man. I don't know what you're talking about. Scared of the authorities. Scared of the German girl who came and recognized him. You find St. Peter, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaks in a loud voice, with boldness, not loud voice, boldness, to the Sanhedrin. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, makes an amazing statement. Verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven, even to men by which we can be saved. No other name. What boldness. Boldness to lift up Jesus, same man who earlier denied Christ three times. 
Now he's declaring before Sanhedrin, so-called no alls of the Jewish faith of Judaism, Sanhedrin, Jewish ruling council. He's telling them, service found no less, for no other name under heaven, even the men by which we can be saved. Boldness which comes from the Holy Spirit's power. Now anointing is upon us today. We can overcome all our weaknesses and return from backsliding. Simply call upon Jesus' name and say, Lord, you heal me, Lord. Cure me, Lord. And he will cure us today. Praise God for that. He'll never condemn us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. You know, Jesus, actually on the cross, when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was forsaken because of our sins. All our sins were on the cross, nailed to the cross. He was forsaken that you and me will not be forsaken. We will not be forsaken. He became a sin offering to redeem us from all sin. He became a curse to redeem us from all curses. What an awesome God we serve. And therefore, thank him for the fact that he'll never leave us, never forsake us. He was forsaken for our sake. That we will never be forsaken. And when he backslide, he will never throw never throw us away. Only waiting for us to say, Lord, I come back to you. For all those who are backslidden, simple answer, solution. Tell him, Lord, I've gone away. I forsaken my first love, Lord. I come back to you, Lord. Accept me, Lord. Accept me. The prodigal son came running back to his father's place. Father waiting for him, hugged him and kissed him. So always is just a prayer away and don't wallow in self-pity when you backslide. Simply come back to him and say, Lord, give me faith, increase my faith. Give me a love for your word. See, if you love God, you love his word. Very simple. When you love someone, you want to hear the person speak, isn't it? If you love your family members, you want to hear them speak, hear the voice. Go a foreign country, you talk to your wife or husband or your children or whatever, your parents, you hear the voice, how nice, how good you feel. Loving someone means loving to hear the person's voice also, apart from being with that person. If you love God, you love to hear his voice. He speaks to us through the Bible. That's how he speaks to us. He can speak in many ways. Always check according to scriptures. So love for God is measured also in love for the word of God. If you don't love the word of God, Something is lacking in our love for God. That's why I don't tell people uh, how long you must read the Bible, how long you must pray, because how can you put a limitation on the time of prayer and time of reading the Bible? To the Bible, God speaks. So if you want to hear his voice, you'll be a person devoted to the scriptures. Say, Lord, reveal yourself to me now through scriptures. So closeness to God is measured also and our love for the word of God. Backsliding happens when we don't find it pleasurable, number one. Number two, offensive. There happens, say, Lord, I come to you, Lord. Something is wrong with me, Lord. I come to you, Lord. Lord, I'm hungering for your word, thirsting for your spirit. And you can be sure that the prayer God will always hear. The solution for backsliding. The Lord heals us of backsliding. In and I can come back to him anytime. Now, look at the flip side. Here you are, right with God, obeying Him, enjoying Him, and you find someone in the church backslidden, close to you. What's the response? Oh, let me see. He's backslidden. Let him come back. Let him come back. I will see. What does God say? I will bring him back. I'm going to use you to bring him back. I'm going to use you to bring him back. How can we think of ourselves as instruments of God in healing other people of backsliding? If you are so spiritual, you won't condemn people. The book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 1, we read, Paul writes, Brothers, if someone is caught up in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. If someone is caught up in a sin, backslidden, was once a very good believer, gone away, not permanently, God won't let him go permanently, God will bring him back, but he's Temporarily wandering from the faith. Here and there is wandering, like a wandering sheep. You are spiritual. and someone is caught up in sin, you must restore him gently. Or be careful or you may be tempted. 
we have a role to play in healing people of backsliding. Lord is a healer. We're instruments in healing. Restore him gently. If you're so spiritual, you won't condemn anybody. The Lord never condemns anybody. Romans 8.1 There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. The other man who is backslidden, is Christ is living in him, is a believer. He's backslidden temporarily. If you are so spiritual, restore him gently. The word restore here is from a Greek word called katartizo. Katartizo means putting back to original shape. This word is also used in the fifth chapter of Luke, where it talks about Peter mending the nets. Some Bibles say washing the nets. It's not washing the nets, mending the nets. Katartizo. The nets were broken. Here is Jesus preaching by the lake of Menasaret. Nearby is Peter, who is not a believer yet. He's buying the nets. He had worked hard all night, previous night, hadn't caught any fish. He's repairing the nets. Katartizo. It's so broken, the holes in the net, putting back to the original shape. That's katartizo. This word is used actually to describe someone who has a fracture. When you have a hand fracture, leg fracture, the orthopedic surgeon will put the bones back in place, putting back to the original shape. That is katartizo in Greek. In those days, there was no anesthesia. When a, a, a bone is broken, today they might give anesthesia and put two, two you know, blocks, put a plaster, plaster barriers, and bind it. All that is modern technology. Those days, what do they do? Person has a fracture. They put the arm like that, put uh, two, uh, two uh, planks, tie a rope around it, and make it stable. No anesthesia. Painful for the patient, painful for the doctor who does the procedure. Katartism means painful. So, when someone is caught up in a sin, you want to be instrument of healing for that person, you must be with that person. Restore him gently. Be patient with him. Love is patient. First Corinthians 13, chapter verse 4. Love is patient. When you find people backslidden, what the easiest thing to say? Ah, oh, let me see. He's gone away. He deserves it. Very bad man he is. Let him come back. We will see. God says, I want you to see how he comes back. You'll be an instrument of healing. Cut out his soul. It's painful, yes. Someone who got up into drugs, for example, and tries to stop drugs, has withdrawal symptoms. You have to be with that person. Alcoholic, be with that person. Don't reject him. If you're very spiritual, you'll be with the person to draw him out of that situation. Lord Jesus Christ, sinless person, he was a tax collector and sinners. He ate with them. Tax collector and sinners, and he even told his disciples that the prostitutes and the Pharisees will enter the kingdom of... Now, not the Pharisees. Prostitutes and tax will enter the kingdom of God ahead of the Pharisees. So he's, he's, a friend, he's a friend of sinners, Jesus. He was a sinless person, friend of sinners. Even Judas Iscariot, Sabbath Judas Iscariot, the Bible will find three people at least who refer to as friends of Jesus. Three people. One was Abraham. Other is Moses. Who the third? Identified as friend of Jesus. Judas Iscariot. Or tell him, friend, do what you have to do. They can betray him. Friend, do what you have to do. Yeah, imagine what an awesome God we've got. So he will never forsake us. He will never leave us. On the one side, if you backslid him, come back to him. Ask him to anoint you with the Holy Spirit. To break the yoke of bondage. Sometimes what happens in a backslide, you feel, I cannot come out of this. I'm caught up in this too much. Caught up in this. I tried so hard, I can't come out. Jesus announced him with the Holy Spirit today. With anointing comes breaking of every bondage. Isaiah 10 27. Anointing breaks every yoke. Please don't blame circumstances. Don't blame people. Don't blame church leadership for backsliding. Oh, they are all uh, no role models in the church. I, I, I can't do this, but it's very bad. And I have to do this. I have to go away from God. You are hurting God. You are grieving God when you sin. Because somebody who do something wrong, or circumstances, or a boss, or a, or a family member, you can't justify backsliding. Ultimately, you are sinning against God. And God said, my child, don't need to suffer. When you go away from me, who is the loser? You are the loser. In the book of Job, 
up to 35, 6 to 8. It's written. If you sin, how does it affect him? If you sins are many, what does that do to him? So righteous, what do you give to him? What does he see from your hand? Your wickedness only affects a man like yourself. Righteousness with sons of men. Our backsliding affects us. God is feeling for us. He loves us so much. He doesn't want us to hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves when we backslide. Simply come back to him. He's so happy. Imagine the prodigal son coming back to his dad. That is waiting for him. Prodigal son is rehearsing a speech. When I go back to my dad's house, I will say, I'll do this, I'll do that. I'll tell him all these things, what I have done. Done. I'll be a servant in your house. I'm not your won't be a son, I'll be a servant. Before he opened his mouth, before he delivered the speech, father came and hugged him and kissed. What an awesome God. The, the picture of God and each one of us. He's waiting for us to go back to him. He simply says, Lord, I have sinned. Lord, draw me back. In the same way, when backsliders come to us and say, Brother, please pray for me. I need help. Please be instrument of help. God wants to heal people through us. Mark 16, 17 says, Believers will lay their hands upon the sick and they shall be healed. Healing is not only from physical ailments or mental ailments, but from backsliding. Also from backsliding. Cure from backsliding. And don't do anything in my hand or your hand. It's just that God said, do it. It's like uh, Naaman was asked to dip seven times River Jordan. And he said, why, why River Jordan? Why, why not uh, Damascus rivers? Abarna and far, far. It's not the water, not the river. God says something, you do it. When you lay hands upon sick people, he says, in my name, they will drive out demons and they will lay their hands on sick and they shall be healed. Mark 16, 18 there is. Mark 16, 18. Believe lay hands upon sick and they shall be healed. Also for backslidden people, pray for them, be with them, restore them, cut out his zoo. Be with them in their pain. Share their pain. Never condemn anybody. It says in the Bible, when you restore a sinner from his base, you cover a multitude of sins. God wants people who are selfless and serve people out of love for him. It's a very wonderful thing to be an instrument of healing for people in the context of backslidden people. Very easy to reject people. Oh, go, go. You are not uh, uh, close with God. Once you are close to God, now we are far away from God. You come back, we will see. Even what they said, they, we will see how he is. God never says like that. He says, you come to me, I will cure you. As you are come to me, I will work in you and what I begun in your life, I will bring to completion. So don't give time limits to people. Say, I will be with you, I will help you, I will pray for you and guide them Step by step. Going back to Old Testament time. What did God tell back certain people? I'll give shepherds out of my own heart. To guide with knowledge and understanding. So, today for the instrument of healing for backsliders, should be people after God's own heart. Listen to God and go and tell them what they have to do. When a backslidden, after tasting God, it's not a pleasant thing. You feel bad. You feel sorry for yourself. You feel you hurt God. Try to avoid God. But God says, no, I, would, I don't want to leave you. I won't never forsake you. Come to me. As you are, you come to me. So such people sometimes, unfortunately, are self-condemned. There's no condemnation for us. Not even self-condemnation. They need help. So at that point of time, they are weary people and they need help. What does God's word say about weary people? How we can instruments of healing? Take the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. He writes, the sovereign Lord has given an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. Today, you and me, as God's children, as the sheep, can listen to his voice. Around us are weary people. People have once tasted the Lord, now backslidden. And they're feeling so bad those days, how nice it was. But I'm gone away from God. People don't accept me. Church doesn't accept me. Now, when you wait upon God, He will give you the word to go and sustain them. To know the word sustain the weary. He wakens me morning, my morning, listen like one being taught. 
So we are called to be people listen to God, not only for our own sake, to go and help people to know what to tell people. How often you find people saying, this man is in a problem. I don't know what to go and tell him. I don't know what to go and tell him. What can I tell him? You listen to God first. There's a point of time when the Lord spoke about the shepherds whose sheep are going away. The chief shepherd is Jesus, chief shepherd. The other shepherds, poimen, pastor, the shepherd of, of God's flock. And sometimes some people grumble, complain, oh, my sheep are going away. My church members are going away. What does God say about such people? In Jeremiah 10.21. Jeremiah 10.21. My shepherds are senseless. Do not inquire of their God. So they don't prosper and all their sheep are scattered. I've often shared this. Once I was in a pastor's conference in a, in a uh, western state in Maharashtra, in a particular town. I was doing a pastor's conference. The question at the time, one pastor had a problem. He said, you're talking about joy of ministry. I have no joy in my ministry. He said, why pastor, why no joy? How can I have joy when that pastor has stolen my sheep? He's taken away my sheep. How can I have joy? And I told him, pastor, a certain pastor was accused of stealing sheep. And he said, I do not steal sheep. I only grow grass. I won't deny hungry sheep fresh grass. So I told this pastor, there's grass in your church. Why would your sheep go somewhere else? Make sure God gives you grass. He will give you grass. Wait upon him. Then the Lord gave me this verse in front of everybody. I was, as I was talking to them, this verse came to me in my heart. Jeremiah 10, 21. My shepherds are senseless. Don't inquire of the God. So they don't prosper. And all the sheep are scattered. So as people who are the function of a Shepherd, function, not title of a shepherd. We are all shepherds to many people. People come to us because they look up to us as God's people. They are in a problem. God says, my child, inquire of me. They are not a person to seek me. They don't know me as well as you know me. So, you wait upon me. I'll give the word to encourage them. So, Christian ministry is all about an intimate walk with God, whereby he speaks to us, not only for our own walk with him. He speaks to us to go and tell people who are backslidden, who are caught up in sin, they can't face up to God, and they need help. And they can't even talk to God. They feel so self condemned they can't talk to God. Have you wondered why in James 5.16, James 5.16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you are healed. Confess sins to each other and pray for each other that you are healed. Now, why is it like that? Normally, we talk to God straight and we confess our sins to Him. Sometimes there are people who can't face up to God. They feel so uh, shy or ashamed to talk to the Holy God. Although God says, I am your Heavenly Father. Such people be more, feel more comfortable with a fellow sinner. <laughs> we are all sinners. Fellow, oh, you understand me, no? God understands best, but we don't have the confidence to go before. So we confess to each other. And pray for each other that we are healed. So God expects us to first talk to him only. But then sometimes the people don't want to face up to God. They avoid God's people also. They avoid God, avoid God's people. They don't feel comfortable at all because the people of the church also condemn them sometimes. They are left out or completely out in the, in the field. The devil catches them even more. He, he makes take advantage of them. Don't fall in that trap. Don't that tell people, oh, let me see after one month or two months how you are. Then we'll see whether, okay, then we'll take you into the church. As they are, be with them, inquire of, of God, be a shepherd functionally, listen to God and go and give them words of encouragement. God's word always encourages. He's an encourager. So he always draws out of sin. 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. He will forgive, forgive us and purify us from all unrighteousness. He purifies us, draws out of sin. Sometimes we are ourselves backslidden and God draws us back. We are right with God. He wants us to be instruments of healing for other people who are backslidden. Either way, all of us have a role to play in this aspect of backsliding, which is basically turning back 
of faithlessness. Faith is a gift of God. Let's ask him for faith. Jesus, give me more faith. Increase my faith. To walk with you intimately and closely. To please you. As I please you, Lord, I will walk with the Lord. Praise God. Let's pray and ask God to increase our faith. We always need more faith. Faith to obey him. Faith to serve him. Faith for every aspect of Christian life. Faith to face difficulties in life. Faith to overcome difficult people. Christian life is a life of faith. When you have faith, you won't backslide. If you backslide, ask him for more faith. That's what he says to his people. If you turn faithless people, I will cure your backslide. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for each one of us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are always there to heal us, Lord, to help us, Lord. When we backslide, Lord, we want to come back to you, Lord. Give us wisdom to just come back to you and just say, I have sinned. I need your help, Lord. You always help us, Lord. When others are in such a state, Lord, help us be instruments of healing for them, Lord. Instruments to encourage them, to draw them out of sin, Lord, in love and compassion, Lord. Give us your love and compassion, Lord. Every good gift comes from you only, Lord. We totally depend upon you, Lord. Pray for every one of us, Lord, young or old, they will be instruments in your hands. Co-workers with you, Lord. Who are we that you should call us fellow workers with you? We are fellow workers with the co-laborers with you, Lord. What an awesome privilege, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.